Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today I have my top 10 favorite romances from 2022. I have four physically with me, all the other ones I don't own. I also want to mention there are no alien and monster romances in this video because I made an entire video for just my favorite monster and alien romances, okay? That was posted yesterday. You can go check it out. It'll also be linked down below if you want to check that out. I had to make a whole different video for that because I just really wanted to talk about 10 of those books. And um, today we're going to talk about 10 other romances that I just loved. So if you really love alien romances and monster romances and you want to know what my favorites were of last year, be sure to go check out that video. And if you just want to get some good recommendations, like these are my favorites so go check out that video but today we're going to be talking about my other ones so we have contemporaries in here mafia dark a paranormal one i also have a non-fiction i want to mention um i know it's not a romance book but it is top five favorite book of the year for me so i do want to mention that too but um these are all romances that are not alien and monsters that were my favorite from 2022 i also have no particular order for these books and how i'm talking about them i don't have a favorite book of the year i don't uh this is very rare for all my other years i've been on booktube i think i've had like the singular favorite book that i've had However, I, I just haven't felt that way this year. So I just didn't have a number one favorite, but these 10 are amazing. And these 10 are most definitely my favorite. I just don't have that one, unfortunately, but that's okay. I loved all 10 of these. I really want to mention the nonfiction book really fast. And so that one is What Doesn't Kill You by Tessa Miller. This is A Life with Chronic Illness, Lessons from a Body in Revolt. This one was everything to me. This is probably one of my favorite books of all time now. This is about Tessa Miller and her battle with Crohn's disease and just talking about chronic illnesses in general. I am someone who lives with a chronic illness. I have multiple and I really related to Tessa Miller in here. I was sobbing throughout most of this book because I related to her so hard but be sure to check out my Goodreads review because I do list all of the trigger warnings for this book in my uh, review. And this book has many. I had to put the book down a few times because it was so hard to read about. Um, because you do read about the author almost dying multiple times because of her chronic illness. And ugh, it was a lot. But this book just means so much to me. If you want to know more about chronic illnesses, if you have a chronic illness yourself and you want to feel like you're relating to somebody, like... This book is everything to me. You can go check out the audiobook. I checked it out through my library. Check if your library has it. Tessa Miller, the author, narrates it herself and she does a fantastic job. I also want to mention for all the books that I'm talking about today, I have a Goodreads review for every single one. My Goodreads is always linked down below. And in my reviews, I always list every single trigger warning for that book, as well as all of the tropes and subgenres that is within the book. So if you want to know any of those things, you can go check out that Goodreads review. I'm trying to keep this video as short as I can. So if you want to know more about the book, you can go check out the Goodreads review. So we're getting into the romances, okay? First, I have Broken Vow by Sophie Lark. 2022 was my year of reading Sophie Lark for the first time. And this one is my favorite from the Brutal Birthright series. This is the romance between Riona, Griffin, and Raylan. This is book five in the series. I do recommend reading these books in order just because like they're all amazing. You could read this one as a standalone if you want to. Um, I'm just saying that you've met the other like these two characters in other books in the series before this one. Riona is a lawyer and she's the daughter to a very popular, not popular, I'm so sorry, powerful mob boss. At the beginning of this book, there is someone out to unalive her. They have attempted it a few times and so her family ends up hiring Raylan to basically be her bodyguard. And while he's protecting her, they're going to try and find out who this killer is. So the two of them are forced to spend a lot of time together. This is definitely Grumpy Sunshine, but Raylan, the hero in here, is the sunshine. He is a cowboy who just is smiling all the time, who loves to just jab and play jokes and just really get under Riona's skin. Riona is the grump in this relationship and it takes a lot for Raylan to break down her walls and to have her open up to him because it's something that she needs. And I adored their romance. It was everything. This couple, they are soulmates. One of the hottest scenes that I've ever read from the entire year is from this book. I believe they go to a lake it was so good. It will be imprinted on my memory forever. <laughs> Everything for You by Chloe Lizzo was released in 2022 and this is one of my favorite books of all time now. I just adore this author. Chloe is an amazing writer and this book like holds 
my entire heart and soul. This is the romance between Oliver and Gavin. So this is an MM romance and it's also a sports romance. They are both soccer players on the same soccer team. There's also an age gap. Gavin is significantly older than Oliver. Oliver right here is the Bergman brother, by the way, this is the fifth book in the Bergman Brothers series. So when uh, Oliver was younger, he dreamed of being a soccer star and he literally had posters of Gavin up on his like wall in his bedroom um, when he was like the star player for his soccer team. And he would just look at his poster all day long and just want to be him and be an amazing player like him. So it's years later and Oliver is finally on literally the same team that Gavin is. And this is also another Grumpy Sunshine romance. Can you tell I love that trope? Gavin is dealing with a lot. He is really struggling to have Oliver on his team because you have this fresh new young face um, being his co-captain and Gavin is getting older. He's dealing with a lot of chronic pain because he's been in the sport for so long and his body is kind of rebelling against him and he's really struggling with the idea and thought that he has to retire soon because his body is going to give out. So Gavin is very jealous of Oliver when they become co-captains um, because he's he, he wants to be like Oliver. He wants that young body again. He wants to not feel this pain constantly. Well, Gavin isn't the nicest to Oliver he's very grumpy towards him but Oliver is having none of that he's gonna try his hardest to get in Gavin's good graces and for them to be friends but then it ends up developing into something more they are also neighbors and uh, they get into a lot of little shenanigans and things happen between two of them I really connected to both of these characters Oliver has really bad anxiety and so he has a few panic attacks on page and I really related to him in that aspect and I thought the representation for that was fantastic. And then I really related to Gavin specifically because of his chronic pain. There's one scene in here where Gavin has to use a shower chair and Oliver has to help him in the shower um, because he's in so much pain. And I just about sobbed my eyes out because of how much I related to that scene. I have to use a shower chair in the shower and Chloe Lee's, you wouldn't think that a shower chair scene would be so romantic and loving and sexy, but Chloe Lee did it. It made me so happy. Like I could cry talking about this right now. Like that scene will be imprinted on my mind for forever. But like it is one of my favorite things ever in the entire world. In January, I also read The Mistletoe Motive by Chloe Lee's and I love this one too. She just can't do anything, anything wrong in my eyes. This is an enemies to lovers romance that takes place during Christmas time. Jonathan and Gabby are our two love interests in here and they both work at the Bailey bookstore. They don't really get along. Jonathan is kind of like the grump who doesn't really like Christmas and uh, Gabby is totally 100% like into it. She loves the holiday season and loves anything like sunshiny, girly, bubbly, like she is a total sunshine. The owners of the bookstore end up confronting them one day and are like, hey, our business is kind of tanking. So we may have to let one of you go. Like we can't afford to have one of you anymore. Jonathan and Gabby are devastated that the bookstore is not doing so great. So they also have a competition with each other to see who can sell the most books by a certain date, I believe by Christmas. Whoever sells the most books, they win and they don't get let go. So whoever loses the competition will bow gracefully and quit the store. And so the two of them are competing to sell the most books while also getting to know each other more and knowing who the actual person is like on the inside, like getting to know each other and they end up falling in love. They just learn more about each other. They realize that there is a fine line between love and hate and uh, this was one of my favorite Christmas romances of the year. 2022 was the year that I was introduced to Neva Altaj and she is starting to be one of my favorite authors ever. I love her books. She wrote the Perfectly Imperfect series. There are currently five out in that series and so I want to mention my top two from that series because those two are two of my favorite books of the year. So I own a physical copy of one of them, but not the other one. So the first one that I love to mention is book two in the series, which is Broken Whispers. You can read all these books as standalones, by the way. There are side characters that like pop up, but um, you don't need to read these all in order if you don't want to. I know a lot of my friends started out with book two because book one isn't the best one in the series and so they go back and read book one afterward but this one is definitely fan favorite and I really recommend doing my friends did which they started with book two because book two is 
amazing. So Broken Whispers is book two. Again, sorry for the shininess. Mikhail in here is our hero and he is one of the most brutal men in the Russian mafia. Bianca is one of the most popular graceful dancers, but she's in the Italian mafia. They are put in an arranged marriage to align their families. However, both of them come from very traumatic pasts and have to lean on each other and get to know one another once they're married because of how traumatic their lives have been in the past. Mikhail has scars all over his body. He's also a single father. He's dealt with a lot in his life being the most brutal Russian mafia man. Um, and then Bianca is not able to speak because of an accident. She had to cut her dancing career early because of another accident she was in. And she just isn't feeling passion anymore. And it is devastating to her and so the two of them are trying to figure out this whole marriage thing one step at a time in this book. This one was so sweet and epic. I loved it. I loved it so much. Before they get married, Mikhail has also been like secretly like pining after Bianca um, because he watches a lot of her performances, dancing performances, and he ends up falling for her like before he even met her and before they even got married and so he is like secretly thrilled when he realizes that he actually gets to marry Bianca and uh, I I love a good hero falls first romance and this is a classic one for that. The other one that I really love in this series is Stolen Touches which is book five. This is the romance between Maline and Salvatore. So Maline is the sister to Bianca, the book I just talked about. Salvatore is... I don't know which kind of mafia realm he's in, but he's a mafia boss. <laughs> um, anyway, so Salvatore and Maline have a very interesting meeting. They end up meeting in front of a hospital. Salvatore is there for a checkup because he's going through some things. And Maline is a nurse and she ends up delivering a baby in the parking lot of this hospital. And she ends up like asking Salvatore for his jacket to wrap the baby in. And from that point, Salvatore cannot get Maline off of his mind. He actually ends up stalking her, like even putting cameras all over her house. Like he, he goes like full on protection mode for this woman. And then he does some more digging and he realizes this woman is actually like a part of the mafia. Like her dad is this big mafioso man. So he sees this as a perfect opportunity to make Maline his. He asks her father to marry her. Malene is not very happy that she has to marry this man she does not know and they get into a lot of hijinks and trouble when she moves in with him and they get married. Um, that's all I want to say because this book is just so amazing. I love a good overprotective hero and that's what Salvatore is to the T. If Malene is not in the same room as him 24-7, like he goes feral. Like he starts losing his mind because he doesn't know where she is even though she'll like call him every hour or text him constantly like he just wants to physically be with her 24 7 and know where she is constantly he even puts a gps tracker in a new bracelet he gives her and so he can just have her on his phone constantly with like the map up with the tracker on like so he knows where she is 24 7. there's also a scene that i just can't forget about where um whenever she moves in with him she's like wearing like some baggy t-shirts to sleep in and he's like is that like an ex-boyfriend's shirt? Like, where'd you get that? She was like, oh yeah, I have a few of my ex's shirts, but I just sleep in them. And he gets so mad. He ends up taking all of the shirts that she brought with her, throwing them in the trash can. And then he goes directly into his closet, takes out all of his t-shirts and puts them in her closet. And is like, here you go. You can wear mine instead now. Like, I loved him. There's also a hilarious cat in here that I just, I, I adored. I loved him. Anyway, so I loved this book and this series in general is just fantastic. You need to read the Perfectly Imperfect series, please. I also got into the Tattered and Torn series by Katherine Cowles this year. My favorite in that series is definitely Hidden Waters. This is book three in the series, so you have met the two people that are in this book, the couple in this book. You've met them in the previous books in the series, specifically Addie. So Addie is the cousin to the heroine from book one, and she just got out of this cult lifestyle that she has been in her entire life. She is finally gaining her footing after escaping her family, like getting away from them. Um, she's actually living in her cousin's like boyfriend's old home. So each book in the series is kind of like about a different family member part of this family. So one of the brothers, Beckett, ends up coming back into town and he needs a place to stay. Addie agrees to let Beckett stay with her in the home and they become roommates and they end up falling for each other. Beckett is so patient and kind and loving towards Addie. Like Beckett is the sweetest ever. Like I want my own Beckett, like a man who is patient and kind and listens and is so understanding. He has so many qualities that I dream of in a man and oh, 
he was so spoony. Beckett is a doctor who was overseas for a while and he comes back to this small town. He really wants to start up his own, I believe, little clinic in the town. Um, but then something's happened where Addie's life is in danger and he tries to save her. I just love their romance. Like their romance is something I strive to have in real life. And so I cannot, I cannot stop talking about this book. I of course have to talk about a Talia Hibbert book. Okay, we're gonna talk about work for it. This is the romance between Griffin and Keynes. Griffin is this big, burly, gruff, reclusive, stoic man who lives in this very small town and he's kind of ostracized by the people in the town because this is a very small town full of very judgmental people and uh he loved his mother so much her his mother was dealing with a lot of mental health issues she ended up committing suicide and they view griffin kind of like in the same light as his mother even though they're completely two different people he loved his mother and he's still living in the same home that she grew up with him in but he cannot change the town's thoughts that he, they think about him one night when he's out in the town with his uh best friend at a bar he ends up bumping into Keynes, and Keynes is one of the most beautiful men he has ever laid his eyes on and he ends up trying to shoot his shot and like do something with this man possibly <laughs> and Keynes is going through a lot. Uh, he's dealing with a lot of things mentally. He went through a very emotionally abusive relationship and he's still trying to break the cycle and thoughts that he had during that relationship. The two of them end up hooking up in the alley behind the bar but Keynes gets very triggered and he takes it out on Griffin and is very angry and mean and rude uh, but he's actually saying all these things that are really mean to Griffin but he actually means it about himself and he's taking out his anger on Griffin when he should not be. And he knows this in the moment and he is very regretful. And then it jumps to the next day where Keynes ends up getting hired for the summer to work at the same place that Griffin works at. And the two of them have to be in forced proximity and to spend some time together to work on this um, farm ranch place. Two of them get to know each other more and Griffin really rubs off on Keynes and Keynes slowly realizes who he is an actual person. He is not the man that he was during that very abusive and toxic relationship and he just becomes himself again and Griffin really helps him with that and this big softy lug of a man I loved him so much and more people need to read it like I feel like this is a Talia Hibbert not a lot of people talk about and that needs to change. My favorite paranormal that I read this year was Blood Moon by Jillian Graves. This is a witch vampire romance. Hazel is our heroine in here. She is a witch and she owns this paranormal bar uh, for paranormal creatures specifically. She's not having the best time um, with her business. She's very frustrated with her business because across the street, another paranormal like bar dance place opened up and it's taking a few of her customers. So she's really frustrated, okay? So she goes to her friend's party at night, really wanted to blow off some steam and maybe get with somebody. And there she ends up bumping into Vlad, who is a vampire. They have a amazing time together that night. She has one of the best nights ever with him. But she then realizes that he is the manager of the place that opened up across the street. She's like, oh no, that's not gonna happen. And so they have kind of like a rivaling business thing going on. Um, but Vlad legitimately doesn't care. He's like, I don't care that we have different businesses and that we're like competing. Like, I don't care. Like, I'm obsessed with you. I want you. I loved this novella. The chemistry between these two characters freaking off the charts. The world that Julian Graves like wrote for this book in the series, because I also think her debut takes place in the same world too. I haven't read that one yet, but the world building is so cool. I love all the paranormal magical creatures and the setting in here. Like it was so immersive to me. I constantly think about this couple, like they live in my head rent free and some of the scenes in here and some of the things they do in here, like I constantly think about I love them so much. And the last book that I would love to mention for this video is Rush by Emma Scott. This is the romance between Charlotte and Noah. This one also takes place in New York City. So Charlotte is a Juilliard graduate. I believe she plays the violin. She's struggling to live in New York City to make ends meet to get a good standing job in New York after she's graduated. But then one day she ends up getting this position to be kind of like a caretaker for this man. However, the man that she was anticipating was kind of like an old grumpy man who lives in this like reclusive apartment in New York City. He is one of the most gorgeous men she's ever seen. He's quite young and he is 
rude as heck. <laughs> his name is Noah and he's experienced a lot in his life. Specifically in the past year, he was a like world famous extreme sport person. And in one of the stunts that he ended up doing, he ended up losing his vision in an accident and he is now blind. For the past year, he has pushed everyone in his life away from him and just wants to live in a hole and do nothing all day long because that's what he thinks he deserves because he thinks he can do nothing without his vision. But then Charlotte comes into his life. He is very grumpy. He is not the nicest to her at first, but he ends up learning so much from her and learning that his life is not over simply because he cannot see anymore. This book was beautiful. It was amazing. I love Emma Scott's writing. And this just gave me the same feelings that I get from like an emotional, memorable romance I will never stop thinking about. I love Grumpy Sunshine romances. I think I have a few on this list today, okay? Um, and the way that Noah like switches from being a grump to like loving and adoring this woman was epic to me. I loved seeing it. Anyways, there you have it. Those were my top 10 favorite romances of 2022. Please let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And remember, I have my favorite alien and monster romances in a separate video if you want to go check that out. Let me know what your favorite books were from 2022. I would love to know. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me a, um, a moon emoji in the comment section down below because we talked about blood moon. <laughs> but anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all!